the Victor Graphics used what's called a mindless terminal, which is, I think, a fantastic term. That's really what they called it. That's what was screen printed on the side of the machine, was the mindless terminal. And this was simply, and very simply, a CRT with the appropriate, you know, sync logic and things like that, and a parallel ASCII keyboard, as simple as it possibly could be. The Flash Riders did all of the hard work. They did all of the heavy lifting for generating the video signal and pushing it out. On a base machine, or rather a stock machine, you had a DB25 that came from the mindless terminal plugged into the back of these. Uh, we have these little cables here, which run from the DB5 or DB25 plane there and connects to a flash writer. Uh, this would be for the keyboard and the video signals was passed on this. Actually, no, I think this had some of the video signals too. Uh, on the standard mindless terminal, it would just plug in here and everything would work. I don't have a mindless terminal. I got this machine by itself. However, again, credit to Vector Graphic, they uh, want to release these boards for any hobbyist to use or uh, professional business uh, and simply it could be put in so they put it in in case somebody wanted it these are capable of producing not only the uh, out for the mindless terminal but composite which is what my little cable here is I have modified this flash writer here uh, you can see this one's got a cap and these two don't. Uh, there's a couple more connections and jumpers to be made, but it will enable the, I think it's this one here, composite video feed off this card. So I can just use a regular monitor. And in my case, I just use a Commodore uh, 1084S. The keyboard also provided slight trouble. Um, parallel ASCII keyboards do exist. You can find them. Uh, Apple II C keyboards, I believe, were uh, parallel ASCII but I didn't really have one that I wanted to give to this. So a very helpful friend of mine by the name of Jim Brain, who had already kind of built this, gave me this. Um, in the center here we have an AVR microcontroller. In his case, what he had done is he had built something that allowed you to convert the scan signals from a PS2 keyboard to a Commodore. Uh, he was gracious enough to help me modify it, uh, and I say help me, he did all of the work. I had no idea how to do this. This was before I started fiddling with microcontrollers. And it takes PS2 and outputs parallel ASCII, which means that I have my PS2 keyboard here, hooks to it, and then there's the DB25 header for the parallel ASCII. So I simply plug this into the back of this, video feed on the 1084S, and I have a working system. If I modify all three of these, then I would have three terminals. I may actually have a fourth. I think I do. Because it is marked somewhere. There it goes. 5034. 5032 is the model it donated that this was, or denoted rather, that this was a 5000 series machine with the 40 megabyte hard disks. 5034 means that it had four terminals hooked up to it. At least that was the original configuration when it came out of the factory. You'll notice that the serial number 1014, that means that this was the 14th unit off the line. And then this hard disk here is model or serial 1003, which means this is the third hard disk of this type with the 40 meg disk that they ever produced, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't think they made too many of these 5000 series. This was really towards the end of the life for the company. So, uh, frankly, the third could have been the last hard disk they put out. I don't know. Um, perhaps we should pull it apart, have a look at this disk, and maybe pull out some of these boards. I flipped the top off the hard drive enclosure, just to show you. Uh, a lot of empty space here, I suppose. Um, you could probably mount a couple of floppy drives in here, at least one. They have, as you can see, fairly standard mounting holes in the base. The chassis were effectively identical. This chassis, that chassis. You know, just whatever they stuffed in it was what made it what it was. Again, another linear power supply and a big 40 meg disc. And this is actually a Quantum, not a Winchester, my mistake, uh, but it should be an MFM drive. Uh, we can see if we tuck down here, you should be able to see the individual platters inside the see-through smoked casing. 
and we're going to try and flip it on uh, just so you can get a laugh at the horrendous noise this makes uh, as one of the Vector list members said, a uh, chap who actually used to work for Vector that these discs did not have a tremendously long shelf life and so after, you know, almost 30 years the chance of it still working would be, and I quote, a miracle of biblical proportions I think he's probably right and uh, we'll show why Keep listening. You should hear the discs or the heads engage at some point. Ooh. Oh! 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 <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, you know, I'm just not brave enough to keep it going. Oy vey. Um, wow, well, there you go. It used to spin up enough that uh, you could hear the drive heads engaging and things like that. Um, you know, the clackety clackety and the whirring noises as they would chatter across the disc heads, or the disc platters. I think maybe it's been sitting just a bit too long. Oh well, too bad. <laughs>